Hello and welcome to today's video where we will be showing you how to manage a logistics business on monday.com in 2024. Logistics is like the engine of the world's commerce, handling everything that moves from one place to another, whether it's the shoes you ordered online or the ingredients your local grocery store gets. In our super busy world, businesses are under a lot of pressure to deliver fast and keep costs down. Good logistics management help companies work smarter, not harder. This is where a tool like monday.com comes in. In. It's not just about keeping track of what's coming and going. Monday.com lets you see everything in one place, helps avoid mix-ups, and even handles some tasks automatically. And if you're brand new to Monday.com, go ahead and click the link down in the description to get started with a brand new account. If you click that link, that's going to bring you to this page right here. And all you have to do is click on get started and begin the sign up process. Now you can either log in with your Google work account or just type in your company email. And then it's going to ask what brings you here today, whether that's work, personal, school, or nonprofit. We'll go hit work and we'll click on team leader. Go ahead and select whatever makes the most sense for you. How many people are on your team? We'll say two to six and 20 to 49 people work at our company. Go ahead and hit continue. And next we're going to select what you'd like to manage first. And we'll go ahead and select operation. Next it's asking what you'd like to focus on first. And for logistics, nothing really fits this. So maybe we'll go ahead and, or maybe we'll select operations processes. Okay. So now that that we have a brand new account, let's go ahead and create some different spaces in monday.com that would be useful for a logistics business. So if you're unfamiliar with how to navigate monday.com, there's this little home section up here where you can see all your recently visited boards and there's this update feed or inbox as well as your different workspaces. We're going to rename this workspace to logistics just so we can kind of keep everything straight. And if we press these three dots, we can go ahead and change the icon. Let's go ahead and change it to this nice orange color here. Now within monday.com, everything sort of happens on these boards. That's where all the, the data is. To customize this to fit a logistics business, let's go ahead and just delete this board and we're just gonna start completely fresh. So to create a new board, we're gonna go ahead and hit this blue plus sign here and click on board. And we're gonna call this inventory management board. And here we can select the privacy level that we want as well as select what it is that we're going to be managing on this board. We can choose from items, budgets, employees, campaigns, leads, projects, creatives, clients, tasks, and custom. We'll go ahead and just keep it on items. Now, the purpose of this board is to keep real time track of inventory levels, different reorder points, and manage stock across multiple warehouse locations. So in order to make this work, we're going to need to customize this to our liking. So to start, we're gonna just keep one board. So if you're brand new to monday.com, here we are, this is a board and within the boards are different groups, which we have here. We have a blue group and a purple group. For now, we're just going to use one. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete this second group. So let's go ahead and like I said, let's just start completely from scratch. So we're gonna go ahead and delete all of these columns. So the first column that we're gonna create is an item ID. So this is gonna be unique identifiers for inventory items. We'll go ahead and press this plus item. And if we look here, we can either search or if we press on the more columns, let's go ahead and come on down to item ID and add to board. Now this is going to generate a unique item ID for this inventory. Go ahead and create a quantity in stock or current stock level. So we'll go ahead into numbers and we'll just type in quantity in stock. Next, we're going to create a reorder level column. So this is for the minimum stock level before a reorder gets triggered. So let's go ahead and create numbers account and we'll call this reorder level. Let's go ahead and just select text for now. We'll just call this supplier. Next, we'll go ahead and create a column for lead time or the expected time from order to delivery from the supplier. And for this, we're going to go ahead and use a timeline. So for here, what you could do, you can go ahead and set the dates here. So this would be from the date that you order for the first date. And as you can see, the calendar will expand and then you could select the date that you expect it to arrive. Next, let's go ahead and create a status column to indicate if the item is in stock, low stock or out of stock. So let's go ahead and hit status and we're going to want to edit these labels. So we're for green, we'll go ahead and put in stock for orange, we'll go ahead and put low stock and the red will go ahead and put out of stock. And lastly, for this board, let's go ahead and create a last ordered. So this will be the date when the item was last ordered. So we'll go ahead and select date and rename this to last ordered. So now we have a super simple inventory management board. And if we wanted to create a separate group here for maybe a different type of item, we could go ahead and hit new group. And this could be for maybe product one, 
one and this could be for product two just as a way to differentiate your different products and this is good so far for our inventory management board next we're going to go ahead and create a new board for an order fulfillment board so let's come in here to board click on new board and we'll title this order fulfillment okay same thing here we'll go ahead and delete this group and we'll go ahead and delete these different columns here and just start completely from scratch all right so the purpose of this board is to manage the processing of orders from receipt to delivery we're going to go ahead and create our first column and that's going to be an order id next let's go ahead and create a customer's detail and this will just be information about the customer such as name contact and address let's go ahead and create customer we'll just type in text and we'll name this customer details for now we want to collect information such as name contact and address so real quick what we're going to do we're going to come back to this board in a second but we're going to create a new board and from here we're going to call this customers and hit create board and from here we're going to input their name so we'll, that'll be the client and we'll have the contact and address so we'll go ahead we'll delete all of these columns so we can start fresh type in phone number we'll also type in email and we'll also type in text column here and title that address now if we go back to the order fulfillment what we can do is we're going to go ahead and just create a new column for the customer details and what we're going to look for here is we're going to look for the mirror so we're going to go ahead and add that to board and we're going to create a new connection that's going to create another column which is the connected boards so we're going to go ahead and select boards and we want customers so go ahead and connect boards and we want this to mirror so this would be call this customer phone so let's go back over to the customer call this john doe now that we have some information in there we can go ahead and select customer that we want to choose and that is john doe and now we can see that his phone number is mirroring over from that customer board next on our columns here we can go ahead and just look for a number and we're going to go ahead and title this items ordered next we're going to go ahead and look for a priority or our priority level for each order and we'll go ahead and create a status column next we'll go ahead and create another column here and this will be a people column so this way we can assign staff member who's responsible for this order and lastly we'll go ahead and create another date column here for the estimated delivery date okay next board we're going to create is a transportation and route planning board so let's go ahead and get that titled and just like we have been doing previously let's go ahead and delete all these columns and start completely fresh and we're going to create some different columns here and the purpose of this board is to plan and monitor the routes for delivery goods so let's go ahead and create a route id so we're going to look for that id field again let's go ahead and select a drop down we're going to call this vehicle so now we can choose from different vehicles here depending on which vehicle it is doing this route next we'll go ahead and select a driver so let's go ahead and select people and we'll rename this to driver the next column we need a departure time and estimated arrival time so for this we'll go ahead and select a timeline again with this feature you can go ahead and click on it and let's say we think that the departure time will be next thursday and the arrival time will be the following friday and go ahead and just select it like that and that way we get a nice little visual timeline and then if you hover over that timeline it'll say how many days that that timeline and next let's go ahead and select a status here so this is for the current status of the transportation and we'll go ahead and rename these we'll have one that's on schedule we'll have one that's done and we'll have one that is delayed and over here we'll have text column and we'll rename this issues so for any issues that come up we can go ahead and just keep that right there as a little note and that'll just be top of mind all right next up we're going to create a board for our supplier relationship management board so we'll go ahead come in here click a new board supplier relationship management we'll go ahead and put suppliers and the purpose of this board is to manage any interaction transactions that we have with suppliers let's go ahead and start from scratch and delete these columns for this first column that'll be our supplier name then we'll go ahead and add in some contact information so let's go ahead and add in a phone number email as well as a text box for address we'll go ahead and add in a date column here for a contract expiry also let's create a performance rating here so this would just be ratings based on delivery times quality and any responses to issues for this we'll go ahead and choose a status and we'll change this to performance rating we'll come in here and edit these to great good and fair and i think that's good for now lastly let's go ahead and create a customer service and issue resolution board and the purpose of this board is to manage customer queries and issues efficiently so we'll go ahead and click on board and we'll call this customer service we'll go ahead and create board okay just like we have in previous examples let's go ahead and start from scratch and we will delete all of these columns for this we're going to go ahead and add a ticket id 
ID. Go ahead and look for that ID. This is just to give it a unique identifier for each issue or query. We'll go ahead and put in text and we're gonna rename this to customer name. Go ahead and select a long text. And for this, we're gonna put in issue description. We'll go ahead and select priority level as well. And we'll go ahead and create a status here for the resolution status. We'll go ahead and create a people column here for whoever this is assigned to handle this query. Something that different that we're gonna do with this particular board is we're going to create a form. Now this form we're gonna be able to share with our customers so that they can fill it out and all of their queries will then be put into this board here. So let's go ahead and we're just gonna delete all of the items within here to start. So we start in fresh and then we're gonna press this little plus sign up here and click form to create a new form. Let's go ahead and create first form. Now from here we wanna make sure that we're showing the correct fields, right? So we don't wanna show everything. So let's go ahead and we can just hide the name. We just want to see the customer name. So after clicking that eyeball, we see that this first one, this question is hidden on the form. We want them to fill out the issue description. Now we don't want them to click on the priority. That is something that we will determine once it comes in. Resolution status, same thing. We don't want that to be seen by the customer and same thing from the assigned to. We don't want them to see that. If we come here to customize, let's go ahead and select the group. Before we do that, let's come back to the main table and let's call this group inbound requests. We'll call this request in progress and we'll call this finalized request. And we'll go ahead and change these colors. So I like that green for the finalized. We'll change this to maybe a yellow and inbound we'll turn these to red. And now going back to this form, what we want to do is when people fill out that form, it goes into this inbound request. And then that way we can move things down to the request in progress once we start work. So coming back to the form here, we want to click on edit form to get back to this editing page here. And here you can change the welcome screen, the submission view, thank you screen, that sort of stuff. But what we're looking for is this monday.com settings. So if we come down here to the group for answers, we want to select inbound requests. Lastly, what we want to do as well is come to this form restrictions and where it says require submitters to log in, we want to turn that off so that we can share this with anyone. Here, it's just super basic. We have the customer name and the issue description, but for this example, that's fine. So let's go ahead and hit publish, copy link, and we'll open that in a new window. And here we'll go ahead and we'll call this John Doe issue description. We'll go ahead and hit submit. Now, if we come back here, we exit out of the form editor and come back this main table view. As we can see, we just got this incoming from answer John Doe issue description. I have never received my shipment. Please advise the status. Now that we have this request, we can go ahead and select priority. We'll go ahead and put this critical resolution status and we'll go ahead and assign this to whoever it is. And then from here, we can go ahead and move this to request in progress. But that's a little bit of manual work. So let's go ahead and create a quick automation to whenever the status is changed to working on it, we'll go ahead and move that into request in progress. So to create an automation, select automate. And from here, we're gonna go ahead and hit add custom automation. When resolution status changes to working on it, then we want to move item to group and we want that to be the request in progress. Now, I also want the same thing to happen for when the status moves to done or completed, it moves moves down to that bottom group. So let's go ahead and hit the three little dots here. We'll go ahead and hit duplicate automation and we'll just change this from working on it to done and move item to finalize request. Create automation. And now to see that in action, let's go ahead and just change this status back to stuck and we'll change it to working on it. And as we can see the automation work and it moved it down into that group. After we're done working on it and it's finished, we change the status to done and we'll see it jump down here into the finalized request group. Now that's just a very basic automation. There's tons that you can do here, especially within the other boards that we've created, but hopefully you're starting to see how you can start to run a logistics business on monday.com. Okay, we've created some different boards here to start running our logistics business on monday.com. Now, if we wanted to create a dashboard to sort of bring all of this data together, what we would do is we'd come up here and hit this blue plus sign and click on the dashboard. Now from here, we'll just call this dashboard and create dashboard. From here, it's gonna ask you us to connect the boards to this dashboard. So again, this is going to be specific to you and your business and what you want to see. But for example, you could click on inventory management, maybe order fulfillment and hit done. And then from here, you can create different widgets, charts, numbers, battery to see your progress at a glance, Gantt, file, galleries, etc., and customize your dashboard to your liking and see everything at a glance. Because there's no data in these other boards that we created, nothing's shown up here. But this is a very powerful way to get a bird's eye view on your entire operation. There you have it. As you can see, monday.com does an excellent
excellent job at catering to a logistics business. And because it is so customizable, Monday.com is capable of fitting into whatever your business requires. So if you run a logistics business and you want to get started with Monday.com, there will be a link down in the description to get started. Now this is an affiliate link, so we do earn a small commission and it allows us to continue making free videos just like this. So if you do end up using that link, we really appreciate it. Now I hope you found this video valuable. And if you did, please go ahead and make sure that you leave a like and subscribe for more videos just like this. Here on this channel, we make a lot of how-to guides and tutorials dedicated to helping out new entrepreneurs start their own businesses. So thank you guys so much for watching and we will see you in the next video. Thank you.